Hey there, it's Ashley at Smart Edition Academy, and in today's video, we are going to go through a practice PSAT exam. So this is for those of you in eighth or ninth grade who want to take the PSATs to see how you might do on the SATs and what you might need to practice before that. Okay, we are going to go through each question together and you can follow along as I solve it. Before we jump in, be sure to check out the links in the description of this video for practice tests just like the one we will go over today, our PSAT boot camp, as well as our full online PSAT course. Okay, so for the PSATs, there are two parts for the math. The first part is no calculator. So these first 13 questions we'll go over today, we will not have a calculator, but then we will go over our second part where we will be able to use a calculator. So let's jump in. First question today, three fourths minus one half. So when we are subtracting fractions, we need to have a common denominator. So the denominator is the bottom part of our fraction. We need that to be the same number. So you wanna find the LCM, the least common multiple. In this case, our least common multiple is actually four. So one of our fractions can stay the same but we have to change one half into something over four. So to go from one half to something over four, on the bottom you have to do two times two to get to four, so we're gonna do that on the top as well. One times two is two. One half is the same thing as two fourths. So now I can do three fourths minus two fourths, and I get one fourth. Okay, once we have a common denominator, we can just subtract the top and keep the bottom. Okay. Find the median for the data set. So we have a set of data here and we need to put it in order from least to greatest in order to find the median. So we put it in order from least to greatest because median means middle. Okay, this means the middle. So we need to put this in order in order to find the middle. So I'm just gonna go through and I like to cross them off as I list them to make sure that I don't forget any number. So I see a 31, I see a 32. Looks like we have one, two, 33s. 34, 35, and I do this because if I miss any, I'll know because I didn't cross them off. 35, 36, 37, and then I see a 38 and a 39, and now everything is crossed off, so I'm good. So to find the middle, I will just take one from the least and one from the greatest, so the lowest number and the highest number, and I'm going to just do that until I only have two numbers left in this case. If you get it and there's only one number left, that would be your median. If you end up with two numbers, we just need to find the average, but because these are the same, my average is just going to be 35. So the median for this set of data is 35. Okay, solve the system of equations. 2y plus x equals negative 20 and y equals negative x minus 12. So when we do systems of equations, we have two options. We can either use substitution or we can use elimination. So for this example, I'm thinking substitution would be best because I have this one on the bottom here that tells me that y equals something. So y equals negative x minus 12. I'm going to plug that in to this y in the first equation. So I'm gonna rewrite that first equation as two times instead of y, I can rewrite that as negative x minus 12, and then plus x equals negative 20. So from here I can distribute, so I can start to work towards getting my terms combined and trying to get x by itself. So once I distribute, now I can combine these two terms, negative two x plus x is negative x, minus 24 equals negative 20. And then I will add 24 to both sides. So that will cross off on the left and I'll just be left with negative x equals a positive four. And in order to then get this by itself, divide each side by negative one and we get x equals negative four. So x equals negative four. That helps me eliminate a few options here. So neither of these can be correct because I need my x value to be negative four and these are in 
coordinate form, our xy form. So now in order to find my y, I'm just going to plug in negative 4 into one of these equations. So let's plug it into this y equals equation. So y equals negative, and then instead of x, we know x is negative 4 minus 12. Negative negative 4, that's really just a positive 4. So positive 4 minus 12 is negative 8, so my y value is negative 8. So x is negative 4, y is negative 8, and there is our solution. Okay, for this one we need to multiply two binomials. So to multiply binomials, I like to think of the acronym FOIL. FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, and last. So these are the four sets of terms that I am going to multiply. So first I will do 4y squared times 2y, that's the first in each parenthesis. So 4 times 2 is 8, y squared times y is y to the third. Now outer, I do the 2 on the outside, 4y squared times 5, 4 times 5 is 20, so 20y squared. And then inner, 3 times 2y, this would be 3 times 2 is 6, so 6y, and then 3 times 5 is 15. And then if I had anything to combine, I could, but because all of my exponents are different that are attached to the y, I cannot combine any terms. So it looks like there's our final answer. Okay, perform the operation. So here, because I have a plus sign in between, these are in parentheses, but this plus sign actually means the parentheses don't really matter in this case. If it was a subtraction sign, it would be different. But with this plus sign, all I have to do is actually just combine like terms. So I see x squared. So negative 3x squared plus 5x squared would be positive 2x squared. Negative 2xy plus 3xy would be a positive xy. And then 4y squared minus 3y squared would be a positive y squared. And then there's nothing to combine here, so that is my final answer. Okay. In a game, positive and negative points can be scored. For 10 turns, the point total is okay, as follows. This is our data. What is the average point total? So to find the average, I need to add them all up. So I'm going to add all of these up and divide by the total number that I have, which is 10. So add them up and divide by 10. I have some positives and some negatives here. So to make this a little bit easier, since we can't use a calculator, what can help is knowing that if you have for example, a positive one and a negative one, they cancel out to zero. So those are opposite numbers, right? One's positive, one's negative. So I'm going to look for ones that are opposite that I can cancel out. So negative five and positive five, that would be zero. Positive four and negative four, that would be zero. I have a negative two and a positive two, that would be zero. And then that's zero, obviously. So I what I have left is neg negative seven plus three, plus negative 6. And that's all going to be divided by 10. So from here, because I have only addition on the top, I can do this in any order that I want. So I'm going to add my negatives together first. So negative 7 plus negative 6. 7 plus 6 is 13. So this would be negative 13 plus 3 divided by 10. Negative 13 plus 3. Get a little bit closer to 0. So this would be negative 10 divided by 10, which is negative 1. Negative 10 divided by 10 gives me negative 1. That is the average point total. Okay. Solve this exponential. x to the third equals negative 216. So something that can help here is knowing how this negative how could we get a negative if we have x to the third power? So this means something times something times something. So if you think about a positive, if I had a positive number, a positive times a positive times a positive, well, that's always going to be positive. That will equal a positive. But if I have a negative times a negative times a negative, negative times a negative is a positive, but then times one more negative would give me a negative. So in order for my answer to be negative when I'm cubing it, multiplying it three times, my answer needs to be negative, so I know it can't be these two. 
So from here, I just need to decide, how do I get 216? Is it 6 times 6 times 6? Is it 6 times 6 times 6? Or is it 4 times 4 times 4? So I'm just going to multiply and find out. So 6 times 6 is 36. Now I just need to do 36 times 6 more. So I might need to do my standard algorithm or any other strategy that you use to multiply numbers. 6 times 6 is 36. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 3 more is 21. So 6 times 6 times 6, or 6 to the third power, is 216. So negative 6 to the third power would be negative 216. So x equals negative 6 would be our solution. Find the mode for the data set. Okay, so mode, we talked about median before that meant the middle. Now when we talk about mode, what mode means is the most often. So MO, mode, this is the most often. So we're going to look at our set of data and try to decide which one happens the most often. So in order to do this, we could put it in order from least to greatest. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through each number as I see it and try to count how many I see. So for 42... I see one, two, three, four, five. So there's five of them. For 45, let's see how many there are. One, two, three. Oh, I missed one. Four, five. And that's why crossing it off can be really helpful just in case you miss. 44, I see one, two, three, four, five. What else do we have here? A 46, it looks like there's two of those. 41, I only see one of those, and then a 48 and a 47. So what happens the most often? Okay, which one happens the most often here? It's actually three numbers. Three numbers happen the most, 42, 45, and 44. So because each of these happens five times, which is the most, the highest frequency, then that will be our answer, 42, 44, and 45. How many dogs are necessary to make a cat to dog ratio of three to two in an area with 1,425 cats? So we have a ratio here of cats to dogs that is in three to two. And we wanna know, well, what happens when there's 1,425 cats? How many dogs are there? Okay, so important to put it in order, cats first and then dogs. And I'm actually going to write these as fractions so that it's something I can solve. So three to two is the same thing as three over two. And that needs to be equal to 1,425 over something, over X, okay? So from here, maybe I'll cross multiply to try to solve three X equals, so 1,425 times two, That's 10, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, 4 times 2 is 8, 1 times 2 is 2. So this is 2,850, and then I divide by 3. So a little bit of practice with our standard algorithm, and now we can do a little bit of practice with long division. So divide by 3. So 3 does not go into 2, but it does go into 28. So 3 goes into 28 9 times. 3 times 9 is 27 one left over, pull down the five. Three goes into 15 five times, which is 15. And then I just have one more zero at the end. I have to make sure I add that so I'm in the right place value. So it looks like 950 is the amount of dogs we would have to have, 950. So this is a free response question that we'll need to just type our answer in. And let's see what we have next. A family has three children. What is the probability that the family has three boys? Okay, so when you have probability, we can think of those as fractions. And if you're thinking about boys and girls, there are two options. So it's going to be some fraction over two. This is the amount of options we have. So for each child they have, it can either be a boy or a girl. Well, we only care about when it's boys. So the first boy, there's one half chance of getting a boy. Now the second boy has the same pr proportion, uh, probability, I'm sorry, the same probability. And the third boy also has one half chance of being a boy. So 
Now, when I do this, I just multiply across the top, one times one times one is one, and across the bottom, two times two times two is eight. So there is a one eighth chance that the family will have all boys, one eighth. Write 83.3 repeating percent as a decimal. So this line up here above that three means repeating. It goes on and on and on. So this is really 83.3333 on and on forever percent, okay? So we need to write this as a decimal and then round to the nearest hundredth. So to write this as a decimal, we swoop our decimal to the left twice. Okay, to the left twice. So this would be 0.83, and that three would just repeat forever and ever, right? Three, three, three. So if I wanna know what it is to the nearest hundredth, this is my hundredth place. So I look at the number after it to tell me, do I stay or do I have to round up? And because it's a three, that tells me to stay. So to the nearest hundredth, this would be 0 0.83 as a decimal. Okay, multiplying fractions. So four fifths times one fifth. When we multiply fractions, all we have to do is multiply across the top and across the bottom. So four times one is four. Five times five is 25. Four 20 fifths. Okay, and we definitely wanna check and see if there's any way we can simplify it, but in this case, four and 25 don't share any factors. So that is our final answer. Okay, and we have one more question to work through on our First part with no calculator. So this graph shows the amount of rainfall in inches for 12 days, which statement is true? So when I look at this graph, I have vertically on this y-axis, the amount of rainfall. And then on the x-axis, horizontally, it tells me the days from one to 12. Okay, so let's see what is true. The first one says it rained more than one inch for half of the days. So one inch would be right here. And it looks like there's only four above that, okay? Four days that it rained more than one inch, which is definitely not half of the days. Um, the average amount of rainfall was one inch. Makes me think that that is not really reasonable because we had so many days below one inch, but I don't really wanna take the time to go and find it quite yet. Let's see what our other options are. We'll hold on to that, we'll come back to it. It did not rain on the final day data was recorded. Well, that's right here, day 12, and it looks like it did rain. Maybe just 0.1 inches, one tenth of an inch, but still rain. And then last but not least, the amount of rainfall steadily decreased throughout the days. So if I look at this, that looks reasonable because it's going down pretty steadily, right? So if I go back to my options, this one definitely seems like the best option. So I am going to choose the amount of rainfall steadily decreased. Okay, awesome job. Okay, that was our no calculator portion of the PSAT practice test.